So now that we have our data context added to our services container, and we have our entity, now what we can do is create a new migration, which will be used to scaffold our database. So what we can do, and in order to do this, what we'll need to do is go into our terminal window, and we'll need to make sure that .NET is not running, otherwise we're going to get an error when we try and do this. So do make sure that your API server is closed down. And what we can do is say .NET EF migrations, adds, and we need to give it a name, and I'm just going to call this initial create. And what we also need to do, because we're using multiple projects here, is we need to firstly tell the entity framework where our persistence project is, the one that contains the data context, and we also need to tell it about our startup project so that it can access the data context configuration that we provided in our services container. So in order to do that, we'll specify dash P as one of the switches and we'll point it to our persistence project and we'll say dash S and specify the API as our startup project. And if we press return, this should go ahead and create our migration. And once this has been created, let's go and take a look at what this has actually done. And if I expand my Solution Explorer, we'll see inside our persistence project that we now have a new folder called Migrations. And this has created three files for us. Now we've got a designer file and a snapshot file. And these files are used so the Entity Framework can keep track of what's going on inside our migrations. And if we were remove a migration or we want to update our database to a specific migration, then it uses the information contained in these files to help us out there. But the one that we're interested in is this initial create.cs file. And this is going to give us the details of what's going on inside our migration. Now we've got a class here, or a partial class, that derives from migration, which comes from Entity Framework called Migrations. And we have two methods inside here. We have an up method, and a down method. And inside the up method, we're creating a new table called values, which matches the name that we specified inside our data context file for the value entity. And we have two columns inside here that are going to be created. First of all, there's an ID. And because this field was called ID, Entity Framework recognizes that we want to use this as our primary key. And because it's an integer, it's going to add an annotation so that SQLite is going to auto increment this number each time an entity is added into our database. And we also have a name column, which is just a string value. And we have a down method, which really does the opposite of whatever's going on inside our up method. And in this case, what it's going to do is simply drop our table. So now that we have a migration in place, what we can do next is actually create our database. And what we'll take a look at next is how we can implement that in our code so that every time we start our project, we check to see if we already have a database. And if not, then one is created based on our migrations. And we'll take a look at that next.